we have to try and move the even flow bin out of the mud hole and up by the shop so we can fix it before we cut seed. So we'll see how well we can pull it with the loader through the mud and water and try not to hit anything else. still get in the shop and then we will fix the steering ram on it so it can drive by itself. Might be good enough right there. This is our piler that's hooked to our seed scooper. And the, the belt runs around this big, uh, big pulley. Well, the drive, belt. the drive belt that runs the, runs okay. this belt on the piler. Well, it was bad. Sprocket was bad. We put a new sprocket on it. Now we have to put it back on. So this bracket that run the whole hooks up right there. And then this belt will hook up to that pulley and that runs the piler. There you go, just push it through. Outside, so I thought it was a stupid Got setup. This big pulley on, little pulleys down there. I could have put the motor up there. We're getting it, like the new one. Getting it put on. We got it all together. We're gonna turn it on and see, see how it works. That watch your, good. watch That's your fingers, good. Grandpa. Looks good. Is it plugged in? <laughs> Yeah, it's not even moving side to side, so we're good. Very good. I'm glad we got that done. How old do you think this piler is, Grandpa? Uh, it's about a... S Let me think. 50-something. 50, 50... Got this piler in the 50s? It's probably about a 58 or 60. So this piler is over 60 years old. Still runs. Still works. So on our farm, one thing we have to do, because we don't have enough trucks, is we have to switch beds. So this is our hay manure bed. We're about to take it off and set it over there, and then we'll pick up our bulk bed, and we'll put it on the truck. That way we can haul seed potatoes and plant, plant potatoes.
legs we have to put on so it doesn't break the PTO that hangs down lower than the bed. Set this down on these legs and unhook it. And then we have to hook up that bed over there and put on. Both bed hooked up now, and then we will lift it onto our truck, and then we'll take it over in the shop and bolt it down. Be ready to haul potatoes, seed potatoes. Back the truck up, we'll put the bed on. It's a little tricky to get it lined up, but it goes pretty easy. All right, we just set it down. We had the line, we have these plates mounted so we know how far back to go. Now they're getting in and unhooking the chains. And then we have to go put some clamps on it and it'll be ready to go for spuds. Easy peasy. So we have these power wires. That's how we get power to the bed. This one was a little bad, so it wasn't running very good, but we just hook up power. That plug right there controls this side door. And then the power runs the back door. And then we just have to put the brackets on. This thing's ready to go. These, these are the brackets and they just hook they hook on the frame right here underneath and then this just hooks onto the bed like that and i'll uh get them on and get them tightened i'm trying to do this one-handed basically this hooks on the bottom you slip it inside the frame like that and then this top piece just you know, i can do it with one hand the top piece pops over this little rod right here, like that, and then it's hooked on. We just have to take and tighten all these nuts up until that's nice and tight. And then we'll be good to go. They're all on, they look like that. Hooked up here on the top to hold the bed down, down on the bottom, nice and tight. These are little rubber, rubber deals that you want a little bit bulged. That's how you know it's putting pressure on it. Gotta go do the rest of them and this truck be done. All right, so this truck is ready to go. Ready to go haul some seed. So we are out here. We have a semi that just pulled up with our seed. He's unloading onto our in. Which goes up, dumps in here. And then we have a piler on the back end where we load the trucks, our 10 wheelers. So we'll be turning this on in a minute. Well, we have one belt going backwards, so we gotta switch these two wires. Hopefully make it go the right direction. It's overflowing right there. That one's going the wrong way. So the potatoes drop out of here onto the piler, which it goes up. It drops them into this truck. When the truck's full, we pull it around and back it up to the seed cutter. The reason we have to transload into our 10 wheelers is because the cellar that we have the seed cutter in is at a weird angle and semis have a hard time backing down there. Here's the truck we just loaded. He's gonna back down into this cellar. You can see the cellar's kind of at that weird angle where if you come straight out, you run into the shop. So you have to back in at an angle. See if he can get in without hitting the door. He's really close. Grandpa's the one who runs all the seed cutting equipment. All right, so now we're backing up. We back the truck up. It unloads onto the hopper. It goes up. It 
runs across all these rollers and they they separate the seed and then they kind of straighten them out and when the seed drops onto those rollers it turns them sideways and then they go into some knives that slice them up I was recording and noticed that our knives weren't spinning, how to stop it. And the knives that are down in there, those are all razor sharp knives and they had pressure on them and it wasn't turning. Because there's a bolt right there on the end of that shaft that wasn't tight. It wasn't keeping pressure on the knives, so now we're back in business. The spuds will come across the top here. Like I said, this straightens them out. And then they roll like that. They go right into the knives. They get sliced up into little seed pieces. Here's a better view from the bottom. These are all the smaller pieces of seed that fall through. And then when they come out, most of them are cut. What isn't cut, these guys pick up and they cut them on these knives that are just sitting here. Then from there they go into this, which sprays a chemical on them to help seal up the skin and helps them start growing once they get in the ground. And then they dump into this bin, which puts dust on them to help dry them out because we run air cut planters, so the seed has to be dry before we can plant it. So they come out of there, nice cut seed pieces. And then we just pile them on the ground back here. We'll make a pile. We'll fill most of this cellar with seed. We have 30,000 sacks of seed we're supposed to put in. And then the scooper and everything's sitting right there. So once we're done, we'll come in from the other end and scoop the seed out, put it into trucks and go plant it. We just took that bed off, that red one. We have to put this bed on this truck because we don't have quite enough trucks for all the seed potato transloading. Now we're gonna put this bed on. All right, so we are about two thirds of the way done cutting seed. Trevor's here unloading the truck still, it's still working. One thing we had break is we had these clips break. We have a new belt just in case it doesn't make it. Other than that, I think we've been running fairly smooth, haven't had very many breakdowns. Everything's just running in there nice. They're cutting what's left. Our dusters are still working good. Back here, we're piling them up nice and high. At least as high as we can go. And we'll start planting on Monday. So in about four days. We have two more days left to cut and seed.